R&B singer, songwriter, and record producer, Donnell Jones dominated the 90s and early 2000s music scene with his own unique blend of the genre, combining old school soul with a new school vibe. It would later be revealed that the passion in his art that would give him so much success was drawn from his own life experiences. The success wouldn't take all his problems away though. In fact, it created even more. Donnell, along with an older brother, was born and raised on the south side of Chicago. His retail worker mother and steel mill worker father, along with their extended family, used music to keep everyone united. Donnell's father also sang in a gospel group with his five brothers and later became a pastor. He noticed right away how intently Donnell listened to the group when they would sing and how much he enjoyed messing around with the instruments. At the tender age of eight, Donnell began singing. By 12, he was writing his first composition. After Donnell's parents divorced, his mother purchased a keyboard for him to support his love of music. As the years rolled by, Donnell found yet another love in the form of a girl named Kashina. The teens met randomly one day while walking down the street and sparks flew immediately. As much as Donnell wanted to make music for a living, the appeal of easy money living the street life was too much to resist. That is, until things finally caught up with him when he got arrested. The sad part is it wasn't for dealing like he was doing. He was accused of an armed robbery, a crime he didn't commit. Thankfully, his time behind bars was brief after it was discovered that the real culprit was someone who looked very much like him. The experience was more than enough motivation for Donnell to get off the streets and focus more seriously on music. At 16, while working a minimum wage job at McDonald's, Donnell's manager heard him singing while flipping the burgers and asked him to try out for a singing group he was trying to put together. Donnell got in and found himself as one quarter of Porsche. To gain more exposure, the group traveled to Washington DC to participate in a music conference where various artists were set to perform. After waiting all day, the group finally got their moment as the last act of the evening. But by then, only a few handfuls of people were still there to listen. Disappointed, the guys decided to go outside of the hotel and do their thing for whoever happened to be walking by. Right at that moment, they noticed DJ, songwriter, producer, and music executive Edward Farrell, better known as Eddie F, on his way in. They stopped him and asked if they could sing for him. He said yes, and before they could finish, Eddie knew he had to sign the group to his company, Untouchables Entertainment Group. Porsche was on their way, and not a moment too soon for Donnell, since he and Kashina had become teen parents and had another mouth to feed. The group packed up and moved from Chicago to New Jersey to start their new journey working in Eddie's home studio. Things unfortunately came to an abrupt end after a fight broke out that ended up with a big hole in one of Eddie's walls. He'd had enough and decided to send everyone home. He'd end up reaching out again though a few months later, but this time only to Donnell. During the group's first trip to Jersey, Eddie noticed that while the other guys were out partying, Donnell lived in the studio, soaking up all the knowledge he could. So while Eddie was working on projects for other artists, he decided that Donnell would be a great addition to the team as a writer. Before he knew it, Donnell was stacking credits as a songwriter for the likes of Usher, Jade, Silk, and 702. While Donnell was doing his thing miles away, Kashina was still back in Chicago. At this moment, the status of their relationship is a little fuzzy, since Donnell told Vlad TV in 2022 that she was seeing other people while he was away. He insists that he was not and solely focused on making music. Clearly, they still continue to connect since she wound up pregnant with baby number two. After giving birth, she and the children packed up and moved to be with Donnell in Jersey. Things took a positive turn for Donnell after Eddie brought some songs Donnell had written with his group to the attention of record executive L.A. Reid. L.A. loved them and couldn't wait to meet Donnell. That meeting resulted in Donnell's first record deal with LaFace. In June 1996, he released his debut album, My Heart. It became a moderate commercial success driven by two singles, In the Hood and a cover of Stevie Wonder's 1976 ballad, Knocks Me Off My Feet. Right from the start, he also established his signature style, complete with shades and hats. To others, it may have just come across as a cool look, but Donnell admits that he started rocking hats so much because of his receding hairline. Donnell's second effort, Where I Wanna Be, dropped in October 1999 and took his career to an even higher level. It was boosted by the global hit single, You Know What's Up, and its remix featuring Lisa Left Eye Lopez, which peaked at number seven on the Billboard Hot 100 and captured the top spot on the R&B chart. Ooh, 
The album produced two other singles, including Shorty Got Her Eyes On Me and Where I Wanna Be, the latter of which became a number two R&B hit. What many didn't know was that Where I Wanna Be was much more than just a hit song on a platinum album. The heartfelt lyrics about the struggle to remain faithful to his woman were taken directly from Donnell's real life. His relationship with Kashina was on the verge of collapse, largely due in part to his cheating. He revealed in his Unsung episode that Kashina was willing to stay with him and work things out, as long as he promised to leave his side chick alone. Donnell admitted that since he was so in love with this other woman, he wasn't going to leave her. The best solution Kashina could come up with at that point was to end things. While she told Donnell she was going to the store, what she actually ended up doing was packing up herself and the kids, which now totaled four, and flying back to Chicago. Even though Donnell did enter into a full-fledged relationship with this other woman, in the end, it didn't work out. Released in June 2002, Donnell's third album, Life Goes On, became his highest charting effort on the pop and R&B charts. Its three singles were less successful, but the lead track, You Know That I Love You, did become a top 20 hit on the R&B charts. At this time, the road along Donnell's journey got a little bumpy. He felt that LaFace didn't push the album because they didn't get the songs they wanted. Then, LaFace and parent company Arista merged with Jive, a move Donnell was not thrilled with. He felt Jive wasn't the right place for him since they already had several other male R&B artists and he figured he would just get lost in the bunch. It turns out, he was right. The process of putting together his next project was not a pleasant one. As he relayed in his Unsung episode, his new label picked out the producers they wanted him to work with without his input. Donnell then chose to use alcohol to deal with his frustrations. The downward spiral led to an arrest for driving under the influence while transporting Kashina and his children to a birthday party. Following a stint in rehab, Donnell headed back to the studio and after a four-year gap, came out with 2006's Journey of a Gemini. It did debut at number one on the R&B chart, but it didn't produce any hit singles, mainly as a result of a lack of promotion. Donnell explained in his Unsung episode that it was a classic case of tit for tat. He was acting out and openly expressing his disdain for the label, so in turn, they didn't bother trying to make the project a success. Two years later, Jive kicked Donnell to the curb, and he went back to the bottle. This time, he spiraled worse than before. He soon hit rock bottom, and heeding the pleas from his family, returned to rehab. This time to not only kick his drinking problem, but also a smoking addiction. Another wake-up call for Donnell was the realization that he had the chance to turn things around if he got his act together, unlike his brother, who, up until that point, had been in prison for the last couple of decades for taking someone's life. Donnell took matters into his own hands by releasing his next several projects on his own label, Candyman Music. They include The Lost Files, Unheard Songs from the Past, which is a compilation album of songs he recorded over the years that never made it on an album, as well as studio albums, 2010's Lyrics, and 2013's Forever. During this time, Donnell finally decided where he wanted to be, and that was with his wife, Jasmine, whom he married in 2013. They met in a club one night several years prior and have been inseparable ever since. She's even featured in the music video for his song, Love Like This, off his Lyrics album. They also share two children. In an interview with VH1, Donnell was very matter-of-fact when asked to describe himself. I'm real laid back. In some ways, I'm an introvert. I don't like to be around a lot of crowds of people and stuff like that. I'm really private. A lot of people say I'm shy, and I don't think so, but I just enjoy the things that I enjoy in life. I'm not really into a lot of material things and stuff like that. I got two cars. My wife drives one, and I drive the other. I'm a basic guy. Music is just my job, and I love it, but that's what I look at it as. I don't look at myself as some R&B star or anything like that. I just really appreciate the fact that I'm able to do what I love to do and take care of my family doing it. Donnell didn't appear to be too laid back though when he penned a bizarre Instagram post in 2020 that has since been deleted, where he claimed that his musical ideas were stolen by other acts and that R&B wasn't the same without him. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? His last project to date, titled 100% Free, came out in February 2021. Donnell got the idea for it while he and the rest of the world was locked down. He wanted to make an album talking about all the things people needed to free themselves from. He also made the project free to purchase through his website. Today, Donnell maintains that since he's in control of his alcohol consumption, 
he's able to have a social drink here and there without fear of relapsing. After forming his supergroup with Carl Thomas and Dave Hollister, called The Shy, in 2021, they've been trying to carve out time to work on a project together. But in the meantime, Donnell's already been in the studio working on his next solo project he hopes to release soon.